All right, what is going on, everybody? Hope you guys have been the best day of your entire life. So let's break down how I made eighty-eight thousand dollars in just one day of trading. And I know it to some of you all watching. This might sound unreal to me. It sounds unreal as well, man. Uh, but it's 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 absolutely crazy. It's it's not. I know it's not. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, yo. Um, I want to break this whole thing down. Now, this this is coming from a little bit of maybe just the humbleness because um, over the weekend, because it's Sunday that I'm recording this video right now, um, and over the weekend, just I was thinking about this, like, how much would I have, like, man, back in the day, when I was, I was not actually, to be uh, to be very frank with you, I was not going to push my profits, like, I was not going to push my profits on Friday, I was like, man, I don't want to push my profits, this is Friday, by the way, um, I don't want to push my profits, because there are going to be some people who are going to be like, yeah, this is not real, and stuff, but then I thought about my older version, like, my younger version, like, back in the day, there was a time in my trading career where I was like, literally, I was about to quit trading. I was like, man, I can't do this. This is not for me because I was losing so much money. And I was like, man, this is this is just there's no way in the world. This is for me. Um, I've lost so much money. Um, but whatever. Right. And um, I actually did quit for time being, uh, maybe about maybe for like three or four days. And uh, what this like what came in my mind that I came back to this whole trading thing I came back so I quit and I came back to this the r big reason why I actually came back to this was because I saw somebody post profits on their social media they posted some I think it was like 70,000 or something whatever it was I looked at that and I went to my calculator I literally put in 70,000 divided by 15 i was making 15 dollars an hour then in australia i'm from australia right uh, for me the market opens at um like 11 30 12 midnight for me okay so um i was making about 15 dollars an hour in australia it's pretty low but you had to do what you have to do right anyway i did the maths and i'm like oh my god it'll take me these many hours to work for this and if I do these many hours and minus the expenses that I have, all this stuff, I'll be left with like $300 a week. That's what I'm left with now. 300 a week is what I'm like literally uh, <laughs> is remainder divided by the 70,000. I'm like that many weeks. Okay, how many months is that? Okay, how many years is that? Oh my God, that blew my mind. It just blew my mind, which made me realize that I need to get back to trading. I think the number was something crazy. Um, the number was like, um, I had to work like 230 weeks or something, um, saving 300 bucks a week just to make that money. And this dude made it in an hour. And that blew my mind that I'm like, okay, divided by 52, that, that means like, well, four, over four, 4.25 or 4.5 nearly. That's how many years that I have to work just to make this while this dude made in a day. And in these all these years, he'll make even more. So he'll always be ahead of me. And he's like, will skyrocket. That made me realize, man, I need to get back to this. So the rest is history. That's what I decided to post. And the reason why I'm making this video is simply that as well. It'll give you, some of you will get motivated by this. Some of you will um, learn from this. And some of you will hate from, hate. Um, I'm okay with whatever. All right. If you're going to hate, sweet. But if you're going to learn, man. You are the person I'm making this video from. All right, enough pep talk, man. Um, let's get started. And uh, this is my promise to y'all. Right, before we even start, I have one promise. I promise that this video will be the best video they'll ever watch. I will pause the video. The moment I get tired, man, I'm going to pause the video. Then I'll like I'll come back again if I do get tired. But I want to make sure this video is a long, detailed video explaining everything that was going on in my head, the psychology aspect, how I sized up, why I sized up, what trades that I took, what strategies I took, how I got in, how I got out, what made me realize that I need to size up, what time frames I watch, what frameworks I use, how what is the concept that I use that actually says trade for tomorrow. And that was the reason why I actually was able to make this money. All this negative risk management, all this I have written in front of me and I have a broker open on my phone in front of me. So I'll be looking down a lot and um, this is a no edit version. So this is like just me talking back and um, let's get to it.
All right, let's get to it. All right, so first things first. The concept that I want to break down is I knew, like you need to, bro, you need to, everybody here, you need to really, really listen to your inner self, okay? Like you need to listen to your inner self because that inner self within you actually knows when are you in the zone. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. All right, so this is a little video that I make for my students every single day when I'm about to trade, uh, what levels I'm watching and everything, all right? So in this video, I actually break this, um, actually say this, look at this. Yo, I feel good today, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, I feel good. If the market comes in my clutches, man, I have, I felt good yesterday and I personally feel like, because yesterday the market didn't have much for us, so we didn't take many trades, we, or we took just one trade. Uh, the confidence from yesterday is pretty much coming for, for today as well. So I'm, bro, I'm feeling good. If the market comes in my little clutches, we gonna make some money. We gonna make some money. You see I, what I'm saying? I like trading Apple. For you see what I'm saying? Does does that make sense? So I knew that I was feeling good. Um, a day before I was feeling good, and uh, Thursday there was not much opportunity in the market. It just wasn't much happening in the market, and because of there was not much happening, I didn't actually try to you know luck into like I didn't try hard enough. Um. I was just like, you know what, man, no problem. So look at this. Um, look at this number for a minute, all right? Monday, I made 10 grand. Tuesday, 3,700. Wednesday, I didn't take a trade. I was trading. I didn't like anything. And this concept, I want to break down in a minute for you. Thursday, I was feeling good. I, I don't know. I just was feeling good. Maybe it was the confidence that I had still intact from Wednesday. I'll, I'll break it down. The market only gave me one trade, and I took the trade, and that, that was it. And then Friday... I was just like feeling all man. I was like, man, I feel good. Like, let's make it happen, yo. You see what I'm saying? So now, um, this concept that I want to break down is um, literally called trading. First point is trading. Like everybody here, you need to start trading for tomorrow. Like what is this concept where you need to trade for tomorrow? The concept simply goes something like this. Okay, so let's say you take a trade today and uh, that's not an A plus setup, all right? It's not an A plus setup and you take this trade regardless just because you haven't seen an A plus setup on the day so far. So you take this trade and the trade was like, even you know that it was not the best trade, all right? And you end up losing, let's say, 300 bucks. Bro, any money that you lose in the market, it's not just the money that hurts, it hurts your confidence. So what happens when you take not A plus setups? Like people take, oh, it doesn't, people go, oh, it doesn't look that good, but I'm going to do it with small position size. Bro, why? Like, I just never understand that. I, it just makes me upset when I see people talk about, I don't like it that much, but I'm going to just do small size anyway. Bro, what? Are you stupid? Like, why would you do that? Like, bro, you have to be really silly to do that, isn't it? And that always annoys me. It annoys me to a point where I'm like, man, why? Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you do that to your hard-earned money? You see what I'm saying? I only want to take A-plus trades. Only A-plus trades, nothing else. If it doesn't look A-plus, hey, you know what they say? Don't make a friend when you feel lonely. Don't go to the supermarket when you feel, when you're hungry. Same goes in the market. Don't take a trade when you just can't find a trade. Just because you want to take a trade and now you're like, man, I just want to take a trade. Why? Why you're a gambler? No, you're not a gambler. We have an edge. We trade an edge, bro. Like, what are you doing? Why you do that to yourself? You see what I'm saying? So I trade confidence and that basically means I'm not trading for today. I'm trading for tomorrow. That means whatever I'm doing on Monday, if I do take all A plus setups and I perform best, what happens on Tuesday? Bro, I still have my confidence all the way up. What happens if I take all A-plus setups again? If they show up, Wednesday I'm even feeling good. Wednesday I'm waiting for my A-plus setups and there's no trades. What happens? I go into the same amount of confidence. So let's say the confidence is this big and we'll, we'll say 10%. Next day I go into the market with 15% confidence because I did everything well. Next day I go into the market because I traded well. I go into 20%. My confidence is going up. Wednesday, I didn't take a trade. So what does that mean? When Thursday when approaches, Thursday, I'm going, because I didn't lose any money, 
my confidence is still intact. I'm still 20%. It hasn't dropped to 8%. It hasn't dropped to 5%. It's still 20%. Thursday, I only could find one trade and after that, didn't take a trade. Now I'm going into Friday and I'm like, man, okay, no stress. If Friday gave me a beautiful opportunity, I'm going to take it. Now my confidence going into Friday because I only took one A plus setup and I just followed my plan, nothing else. Now I'm approaching the day with 25% confidence and 25% is better than minus 3% just because you want to take a freaking trade. Think about it. Does that make sense to you? Like that's what my mindset is when I'm approaching the market. I don't trade just because I want to take a trade. I trade to fucking make money. And if you trade just to take a trade, bro, you're going to lose. You need to trade to make money. Like at the end of the day. And how does money going to come? Money is only coming by 8 plus setups. So start trading for tomorrow if you want to make money. If you don't want to make money, you just want to be a guest, whatever. I hope this concept is clear. So don't take any trades that's not A plus setup. And now you might be sitting there, but bro, I do not know my A plus setups. Then whose fault is it? Is it my fault that you don't know your A plus setups? Bro, look at your journals. Go look at your journals. See which stock you make. Now, what's the characteristics that I can help you with? Literally, go to your journals and see when do you make the most amount of money. Is it from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Time? Is it from 10 a.m. to 10.30 Eastern Time? Or is it from 10.30 to 11, 11 to 11.30? Find your half an hour when you trade the best, okay? Whatever time you trade the best. And then find out what stock you trade the best. Like it could be SPX, it could be Nvidia. Find out what stock you trade the best, okay? And then you need to find out what sort of setups you trade the best. So for example, previous day high, it's above the previous day high, it's above pre-market high. And when you do take, if this both are setting up and you do take this trade and prices are above all this and you do take a trade at the pullback, that sort of setup is a plus setup for you. And now you're like, but okay, this is like just characteristics. Now, what's A plus setup? Let's say you make most amount of money from 10 a.m. to 10.30 and you make most amount of money on NVIDIA and you make most amount of money on this. A plus setup for you, you know what it is? Let's say it's 10.15 a.m. NVIDIA is giving you a beautiful entry because NVIDIA is above previous day high. It's above pre-market high and it's giving you a beautiful pullback entry. That becomes your A plus setup. It's within your clutches. Yo, does that make sense to you? I'm just dropping free sauce right now for you because I fucking love you. And I, my promise to you in this video is I'm going to break down every single concept to a point where you actually understand. All right, where you actually understand where you're like, man, this was the best video I ever watched. There's no fancy editing. There's not, none of that crap. All that I'm doing in this video is giving you the sauce that you need so you can start actually performing better than what you are and actually take yourself to the next level and now if you're just sitting there and watching this video not actually taking notes bro you're crazy so go get up pause this video go get up grab a pen and paper yo grab a pen and paper come on go grab a pen and paper sit down and write this stuff down and if you think that i'm just bullshitting man good luck because you pay for my holiday you are the person who pay for this house for me to live in you're the person who pay for my cars you're the person who literally have my parents retired in a way because you i will always be able to take your money away from you legally because you're just a guest all right the stock market money goes from person who doesn't know how to trade to a person who knows how to trade so thank you very much from bottom of my heart um <laughs> all right so this concept is clear so you need to start trading for tomorrow and only trade a plus setups if you have to take a trade so your confidence is still intact now second point all right Second point that I want to break down is called bell curve. Now, what is bell curve? Now, bell curve, if you if you little bit, you know, if you know a little bit about markets or just a little bit about, you know, um, education, oh, not education, academic, uh, bell curve something looks like a bell. You know, the bell, just like a bell, like um, like in Indian temples, there's bells. But I don't know if you know. But this is called bell curve. So, what is bell curve? As your this is a day like the time or time, this is your position size on this side. This is a graph, okay? Now, as soon as you start your day, you start with small position size. 
if your first trade of the day, like me personally, man, when I'm di- when I'm trading, if my now I'll keep it super real with you, if my first trade that I take on the day is green. I walk away green on the day. It's just something mentally, something's maybe loose in my brain or whatever it is. So when I'm starting on the day, I just want to take a small position size. So let's say, for example, based on this bell curve, we'll come back to this in a minute. Let's say I took my first trade of the day with small position size. Let's say I take a trade with $1,000 and the trade didn't work. So now I lost 20% of this. Let's say, for example, I lost $200. I'm red $200. Okay. Now I'm looking at this is the first trade. Now I'm looking at second trade of the day. Okay. This is a second trade. Second trade. Now, this is what happens. This is crazy about bell curve. Bell curve literally goes upside down when you are taking losing trades. So basically, it goes like this. What does that mean? That means whatever your position size was for the first trade, all right, up until you hit your green trade, man, your position size is going to start becoming small. What do losers do? What do people who do not know how to make money do? You know what they do? They put their position size up. So instead of $1,000, next trade and next trade is 1500 bucks. Why? Because they want to make the money that they lost back also, plus a little bit of profit. No, that's not how you trade because majority of people are going to lose money in the stock market. That means you need to do opposite of what majority does. Okay. Now, let's say if I took the first trade and first trade is red, whatever. Now, my next trade is going to be smaller position size than the first first um, first trade that I took. Now, that, let's say it is 800 bucks. Let's say if I lost 20% of this as well. It didn't work. I lost 160 more bucks. Okay. Now I'm watching the market. I get my A plus setup. Everything looks good. Now all A plus setups doesn't have to work. Uh, There are chances they might not work. Now I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, I'll wait, 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 wait. Now I take my next trade. It's even dropping in position size. It could be 700. Could be you can even keep it same 800. Don't over over position size. Let's say 600. I took the trade. It didn't work. I lost 30 percent this time. Now I lost 180 bucks. Now I'm red. So what is that? Count. Hey, 200, that 360 plus 460, 560, 540. 540 dollars red. That's why my losses are so small. And now I have a rule that says if my three trades consecutive are red, I walk away. Bro, I walk away. I'm just like, I'm out of here, man. I'm done. Like literally, I'm done. And that is called bell curve. Okay, it will save you from yourself. But on the other side, let's say if I take my first trade of the day, green, thousand bucks. Okay, first position size is thousand. I make twenty percent. Now I'm twenty. Uh, I make twenty percent. I'm doing dollars green. Okay, I take second trade. That goes a little bit higher position size. So it would be like let's say twelve hundred bucks. I make twenty percent. What is the number? Two forty. Now you see what I'm saying? Two forty green. Third trade. I take position size 1500 bucks. I make 30%. That's 450. All right. My position size keeps on going higher and higher and higher up until I take my first red trade. The moment I take my first red trade, next position size is a little bit smaller. Then if I, if I am able to come back from that, it might go up again. This is how the bell curve basically works in my head. Does it make sense? Now think about it. 200 plus 240, 440, 440 plus 450, that's $890 green. Similar stuff, similar concepts. We didn't do anything different here. Now, this is how your red days will always stay smaller than your green days. Because you're putting a position size up as your confidence is increasing on the day. So you are betting on the day when you're actually in the zone. That's exactly what I did as well. That's how I was able to make so much money on the day because I kept putting my position size up, 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 up to a point where I'm like, man, I made so much money and I was still, it was, everything was still working. I just called it a day because uh, I was up so much, man. It just was uh, bothering me to a point where I was like, man, enough is enough. I'm done. And I'm, I was done. You see what I'm saying? So initially, later on, when you start getting tired, your position size start dropping. And when it just doesn't make sense, you just call it a day. That's called bell curve. And I promise you, I'm just feeling generous. That's why I'm giving it to you right now. Like, 
bro, people will pe- people do not even know. Uh, you know why other traders don't even talk about this? Because they don't even have a framework. I have a framework for everything. Like, think about it. When you need to go make a coffee, what do you do? Or Don't worry about coffee. What do you, like, if I need to fill this water bottle up, what do I need to do? It is a framework. Open the cap. All right, open the cap. Put the cap down. You can hold it. Bring it under the water. Um, I don't want to drop this on my desk. Um, bring it near the water tap. Okay. You hold the water tap down, or you know, you um, let the water in. You hold it. You watch it when it's full. You pause. Put the cap back on. You got a water bottle. Think about it. If you go, I'll open the cap later. Just try to fill it up. I'll open the cap later. Bro, no. There's frameworks to everything. There's frameworks to everything that we do. There's a framework to unlock your iPhone. There's a framework. There's a framework to turn this light on and off. I need to pick this remote, press the button, put the remote back down. There's a framework to everything. But when they, when you're trading, why is there not a framework? Think about it. Now, I have a quote that my mentor told me back in the day. He said, you will always follow a framework. Now, the question is, are you going to follow your framework or somebody else's framework? If you do not have discipline enough, if you're not disciplined enough to follow your framework, you will become a bitch who follows some other man's framework who is disciplined enough to make sure he follows it. And now he will make you follow it too. To me, I was like, man, oh my God, I need to do this. I need to do this because I ain't no bitch. You see what I'm saying? So now I have frameworks for everything. And I'm sorry, hey, if you don't like my style, please stop this video and you can F off. That's how I teach. That's 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 me. I'm just keep it real. You know what I mean? If you don't want to watch the video, like it's not going to benefit me if you watch the video or not. So if you watch the video, you're going to fucking help you make some money. All right. Now, this is clear. Now, trading for tomorrow, bell curve framework, then comes time frames. All right, time frames for trading. A lot of people just watch one time frame or they just do not know. They, oh my God, I guess asked so, so many times. What time frame did you take this trade on? What time frame should I use? Bro, I use one hour chart. And this is what people tell me. I use one hour chart for scalping. I'm like, man, how can you do that? Like it make, it make no sense to me. All right, now I'm, I'm going to give you the time frames for trading. Now, I watch, I do not like more, a lot of candlesticks on my charts. I just don't enjoy when there's a lot of candlesticks. I don't enjoy when there's too much choice in life. You see what I'm saying? Like I personally, I go to the stores where, you know, there's only few choices. Like have you ever been to a um, luxury store? Like luxury store like um, Louis Vuitton, let's say, for example. Okay. You'll see that they only have like six type of shoes there. You'll see there's only like three or four different type of bags there. Why? Because they have figured it out. More choices confuses people and they do not buy. Okay. You need less choice in life. Less of the choice, more easier it is to, for you to fall in love with something and you will end up buying it. And that's why when you go to a $2 store, they have so much stuff. Oh my God. When you go to luxury stores, there's usually less stuff. And there's a reason behind this, okay? Less choice, it's easier for your brain to comprehend the stuff, okay? That's what I do as well in my trading. I keep candlesticks less. What does that mean? As soon as the market opens, I'm on on a two-minute chart. I go from 9.30 Eastern Time to 10 o'clock Eastern Time on a two-minute chart, okay? I use five-minute chart. Also, also, hey, don't just take, don't just only use two minutes. I also use five minutes along with this. It just two minute gives me a little bit of a zoomed in version because this market just opened. You know, just not much happening. So I use two minute and five minute chart from nine thirty to ten o'clock, and then strictly five minute chart from ten a.m. to eleven a.m. Now. By that time, this because two minute candlesticks, there's so many candlesticks now. I don't like too many. I like less. So I jump on a five minute chart, less candlesticks. Now, after 11 a.m., there's so many five minute candles now. I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting confused with these candlesticks. So many of them. Then I jump to 10 minute chart. I jump to 10 minute chart from 11 a.m. to rest of the day, pretty much, whatever I'm trading. So I trade on a 10 minute chart after that. 
hope, hope that makes sense okay now two minute five minute and ten minute these are my go-to's for trading now what uh, what um, chart do i set up my like lines and stuff that are running across my um, charts you know the support and resistance lines i set up support and resistance lines on a one hour chart okay i just go to one hour chart it has pre-market data on Okay, pre-market and aftermarket data on. Some people are like, oh, but there's not enough volume in the pre-market. Bro, some people, that's why some, most of the people are broke. So stop listening to people. I'm telling you, keep your pre-market data on. You need that. Okay, you need that if you need to draw levels on a one-hour chart. And I only draw levels on a one-hour chart. I don't look at daily. I don't look at weekly as such. I only look at daily and weekly over the weekend. And that's all I do. Okay, now this is three concepts that I've broken down now. And now let's jump to the first trade that I took, which was Microsoft. Okay, so let's get rid of this and let me break down the Microsoft trade for you. Okay, now go. let's go back and look at the time frames and also look at the bell curve. Now it's the first trade of the day. What am I doing on the first trade of the day, yo? I'm keeping my position size small. Let me just get rid of this. By the way, hey, this is my Instagram. Go follow me on Instagram, all right? And uh, this is my Instagram, and I make a lot of content for you guys. Um, go follow me if you're not following me already. And if you are following me, I appreciate you. And um, by the way, also, if you want to learn more from me, how I actually do all this stuff, man, the, the first link would be in the description box below. Let's see. Apply, and uh, we can we can talk. Yeah. Anyway, I just need to close this. I'm getting confused. All right. Um, okay, let's have a look at my Microsoft trade, the first trade of the day and why I took the trade and what was going on. All right. Now, if you look at this particular screen right now, right here, okay, this is what everything was looking like. Everything was, bro, everything was skyrocketing. I was like, oh my God, man, everything is pushing. You see what I'm saying? This was SPY. Let me see. Yeah, this was SPY at this time. And this is QQQs. Everything was going nuts. I was like, oh my God, this is, this is insane. And then we need to wait for a pullback. I'm a sort of trader that once a stock has made a decent move, whatever it is on, I need to see some sort of pullback. And then I saw this. I'm like, okay, there's some sort of pullbacks happening. Spy giving me a pullback. Um, this, there's a lot of names that are giving me a pullback. You see what I'm saying? But I was still chilling. I'm like, yeah, no stress. Let's see what's going on. Um, I saw Microsoft above pre-market high and also saw it above kind of like yesterday's high as well so i was like okay for me that is actually a good sign for my personal trading and i'm still waiting i'm like still sitting there haven't taken any trade on anything yet i'm like okay no problem sweet i saw this pullback i looked at qqqs i'm like all right qqqs are looking good why this i like this pullback i like this Microsoft pullback as well. Why? Because this is the previous, like, think about it. Let me zoom in. This is where the previously, right, like, a couple of minutes ago, market rejected. It rejected, and it was a micro resistance where the sellers came in, now has broken above, now it acting so far, it's acting as a strong support. Okay? Previous resistance turned into support, nothing fancy about it, it's just normal. All right. And then I'm like, OK, um, let's see if, uh, you know, if there's some decent move to be happening, if there's just some decent move. But I do not just simply take a trade like this. I like to see some sort of confluence. Um, my first confluence came from just it making this hammer candle hem like looks like a hammer. That means buyers came from the bottom and the buyers were interested. And this white line is the view up. And this is my settings for the view up, by the way, if you want to take a screenshot. Um, and I saw this, I'm like, okay, cool. It might be bouncing nearly near the VWAP, just 10 cents off, sweet. And then I went and drew my Fibonacci's. I went here, grabbed my Fibonacci's, literally held it at the low of the day to the high of the day. And I'm like, okay, it's holding my 0 0.382 level. And these are my settings for the Fibonacci's as well. These are my settings for Fibonacci's. All right, I only like to watch the 0 0.236 and 0 0.382. I don't watch anything else. And now I was able to see this because as a day trader, you only want to see fastest moves. And this one thing I realized, the strongest trend will bounce off 0 0.236. Strong trend will bounce off 0 0.382. A decent trend will bounce off 0 0.5. Weak shit. 
it's reversed. Okay, this is how the market works. But anywhere from 0 0.236 and 0 0.382, I like it. After that, man, my grandmother can literally run faster than any of that. Like, I, my, my grandmother's 90 plus. So, <laughs> I only like to see these bounces. And if I see a market literally giving me a bounce like this, like we are bouncing of this Fibonacci, that means it's a good sign. All right? I went long here. That was my trade. I went long here because I see so much confluence. I have pre-market high sitting right here. I have Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci bounce. I have hourly level sitting right here. I have um, eight exponential moving average sitting right here. I have VWAP sitting right here. I had so much confluence. So I went long. Boom. I went long here. And this was the first trade of the day. So my position size was small. You see what I'm saying? So my position size is small. No problem. Let's see what happens. And uh, we'll see what we need to do about it. Now I'm in the trade. Think about this. Look at the volume. So such a low volume on the red candles and so much volume on the green candle. That means buyers are interested. Now I'm in the trade. No problem. Let's see. And now it gave me another pullback. I'm like, okay, let's see Fibonacci's right here. It's bouncing off the Fibonacci's. And let me see if the next candle goes above this yellow line. Now that will give me a confluence. Now I'm already up on the trade. This is Friday and Friday market moves very wild. And I took this trade where 428.6 prices nearly touched this 430. That's a $1.50 move. Think about it. On a Friday, $1.50 move, bro, you are getting paid. Now I'm already up on the day. My position size is small. I'm like, okay, if this market has bounced, previously got rejected here. Now we broke above and the candle came down. Low volume. That means sellers are not really interested. Fibonacci level is right here. Okay, let's see if the next candle is able to bounce and get above this hourly level. And also this, I just want to see a price bounce in this zone. I want to see the price get above this zone. Why? This one level here, the second level here, the Fibonacci is holding it. Let's see if it gets above this. If it gets above this yellow line, man, I'm going to add. I'm like, I'm going to add. This is what I'm, my brain was looking at. And literally, next candle opened. We got above there. I'm like, oh, let me go long again. So now, check out the volume. More volume than the green, red one. That means buyers are there. All right. Now, you might be like, but how do I compare the volume? Bro, compare the volume with the previous candle. That's all you can do. Pre compare with the previous candle. Compare with the previous different color candle. This red candle, less volume. Sweet. This looks nice. Okay. Now I'm just like, all right. Now let's see where we can go. Now I have some position here. I added a little bit more. Now I have decent position. And we made a decent move up. And this was all luck, yo. I'm not just bullshitting to you. I While I was in this trade, I also took some other trades as well. I'll, I'll break it down moving for, uh, in a minute. This was all luck. Like, what I mean by luck is you'll see. This is what happened. Look at this move. It went from 428.5 to all the way up to 432.5 on a Friday. Yo, on a Friday. <laughs> on a Friday. This paid... Bro, this paid, this paid money, this paid decent money. And that was my beautiful, 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 beautiful trade. Um, I, of course, I kept taking profits along the way. But this trade, um, I think it was like a 110% 120% trade. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, but this was a trade. I added and added, add to your winners. People add to, your, add to their losers. You need to start adding to your winners. You see what I'm saying? So that was a trade on Microsoft. Pretty much exactly followed the bell curve. I took the bell curve, okay? Small position size. Then it gave me another entry. A little bit more position size. You see what I'm saying? And kept, I kept taking profits as the price is going up. And also, I just take my A-plus setups. These are my A-plus setups. You see what I'm saying? So now I'm fully in the zone. I'm like, man, I'm just going to smash this. This looks good. I'm on a two-minute time frame. Everything looks nice. Let's freaking do this. I just f was feeling in the zone and I was like already up decent and I'm like, okay, let's, let's bloody go. All right. Now, so now what, what was happening in my brain was I took that Microsoft trade and I was up decent. Initially, the first quick little move that um, I was talking about. What I did after that, I was like watching this QQQs. All right. So roughly around here, next candle, I think I took um, Microsoft and I saw QQQs. Uh, at this stage, by the way, at this stage, I was already up a little bit on Microsoft. So now I was like, okay, um, this is pretty much the same thing. I, I'm up a little bit. Now that means let me look for another trade 
All right, and that was QQQs. Now, I initially did small position size, not small, like decent position size. Now, you guys might be like, bro, but you got to tell us your uh, your um, position sizes. Man, my position size, I don't even know. The reason why I don't even know is because in my brain, I always think of it like, okay, I started off small, but as the trade is working with me, I'll keep adding to my position. And as the trade is, keep, you know, it becomes thousand dollars to fifteen hundred two thousand five thousand ten thousand i don't know where how much it goes up to because when i'm in the zone i don't pay attention to anything i pay attention to the charts when i'm paying attention to the charts that's when i've thought that i that, that's when i realized that that's when i make most amount of money when i'm paying attention to the charts not when i'm paying attention to the pnl not when i'm paying attention to how big of a position size i have i make more money when i'm paying more attention to the charts so i trade the charts i don't trade my pnl all right Saw this QQQs and I'm like, okay, let's see, um, you know, let's see if we might go long if we are able to. Now, think about it. Like, look at this. Let me draw the Fibonacci for you. Okay, we are above pre-market high. We are um, we are above pre-market high. We are above yesterday's high, I think. And everything was looking bloody beautiful. So I'm like, I'm just in my brain. I'm like, okay, this is the hourly level that we have. This is the Fibonacci. Clearly, it's holding the Fibonacci. And it's kind of making like a little flag thing. You know, you, you want to just whatever makes your mind at peace at that given time I'm like okay if you break the flag i'll jump in sweet where's the stop loss my stop loss can be just on the other side of the candle like literally if i'm jumping in right here at the break stop loss can be on the other side of the candle you know of course uh you give it like in five seven seven cent move whatever and i'm like okay if it goes up to this yellow line that'll be nice if it goes up to the next yellow line that i have on my chart this becomes an absolute banger trade. Why I'm risking 35 cents to make a dollar seventy? Oh, what are we joking? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that's exactly what happened. Um, as soon as it took over, it my stop loss was about four. I'm like, okay, if it goes down to point four, I'll jump out. Why not just here, bro? Like five six cents, you got to round off the stop loss a little bit. Um, also in my little um. <laughs> In my little brain, what I was thinking was maybe it was very, very quick. And I also was paying attention to it at the same time I was paying attention to Microsoft. So I'm just like, okay, we are still holding the whole area. I'm still in. It's close to the stop loss 0 0.4 because I rounded off the number from 0.45 or 46 to 0.4. And I'm like, just wait. Let's see what happens. And bam. It made a huge as soon as the candle opened it just skyrocketed straight up bro and i'm like okay the volume is more than the previous red candle that means it's a good sign the buyers are there and now i'm just like oh my god let's 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 see now here's the thing though when it was so close to my stop loss i added a little bit here now i do not add beyond now this is a big 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 mistake people make people add beyond the stop loss prices here after their stop loss and now they add more just because they want to average down no i average down before it hits my stop loss because for this last adding that I, i'm doing my stop loss is this so little stop loss is still the same does that make sense so that means if i'm risking this originally and now i'm able to just buy a little bit cheaper um, my stop loss is still the same i'm just able to buy a little bit cheaper okay so as soon like where it was at the bottom man i'm like okay um I have very small risk. Let me just add a little bit more. Now, I, because I was already up on Microsoft, in my brain, I'm just in the zone. I'm not even thinking about nothing. I'm like just executing to my best of the ability that I know how to. And that's what I was doing. And it was, hey, that's in front of you. It was working, all right? It was working. Look at that. Look at me. <laughs> Look at me just absolutely smashing it. Um, all right. Now, what am I doing after this? This trade, absolutely beautiful. Um, and now I'm just sitting there. Let's see where it goes. Similar stuff like Microsoft. Man, it was a time when Microsoft and QQQs are just skyrocketing. They're going up non-freaking-stop, yo. Look at this. And now it gave me... It, it, I like this. I'm like, okay, this pullback is nice. Um, it's still, It was still holding. Look at this. Um, I'll drop my Fibonacci. I'll move my Fibonacci up. I'm like, it's still holding above this. This is looking absolutely insane. Everything is good. Um, there's no reason to do anything about the trades. You know, you're making money. When you're making money, man, you're like, okay. Uh, there's no reason to, you know, um, micromanage the trade. Because it 
trend that is going up like this isn't just gonna reverse on you straight away all right it's gonna give it's gonna show you the reasons when it's about to reverse it's gonna quickly show you that i'm about to reverse you need to manage and do something about it so when it was happening here now at this stage i was in 497 calls i i was in 497 calls um i picked up some 498 calls um roughly the moment i was like okay if you make a new high of the day trade is working i'm gonna pick up some 498 and people bet on their losers i bet on my winners this is already a winning trade yo i picked up a small size and look at that and look at that yo look at that and it was absolutely beautiful. I'm still sitting in the trade. There's no reason for me to sell. That's what I'm trying to say. You see what I'm saying? Now, 10 o'clock was about to happen. As soon as 10 o'clock happens, what do I do? I jump on a different time frame. I broke this down before. As soon as 10 o'clock hits, I jump on a five-minute chart. So as soon as 10 o'clock hit, what I do, I jumped on a five-minute chart straight away. And... On a five minute chart, I saw this. I'm like, okay, this is looking not bad, eh? Not bad. It's straight. <laughs> this is going up straight up. It's going to stratosphere. That's what my brain's thinking. I'm just like, okay, can we push up to 500? And don't forget, my first entry was 496.7. On a Friday, on QQQs, you have 497, 498, 499 calls because I'm betting on my winners. Like, I'm adding and adding and adding and adding. Why wouldn't you do that? Boom. It went up to 500. I took some profits. I'm like, sweet. This is absolutely beautiful. You see what I'm saying? Now, same thing, yo. Same thing that I did on AMD. Similar stuff that I did on AMD as well. Um, I jumped in um, on a two-minute chart because I was still, this is first half an hour. I saw AMD giving me a beautiful end. Now, at, at one stage, I was in AMD, I was in Microsoft, I was in QQQs, I was in SPX, um, and quite a few contracts of, like, I'll keep it real with you, okay? I'll just keep it real. And now you, some of you are going to be like, yeah, but that's why you made money. Bro, bro, when you're in a zone, why wouldn't you bet on yourself? At one stage, I had some Microsoft calls. I, and this was all in front of like, I think there was like a couple hundred people watching my screen live, my students watching my screen live. And I did this all in front of, like, this is not like hidden secret, all right? Microsoft calls, I was in Microsoft calls. I had QQQs, uh, 497, 498, the trade that I just showed you, 499 calls, okay? Now, these are like, oh, this is one trade. This is three different trades. And then I was in amd because amd is giving me a similar setup and amd i had uh, 157.5 calls okay it was just setting up so nice at this trade open and then i had um spx trade roughly around this time um spx i had four different strikes i'm looking at my journals 5845 50, all calls I all calls. Now think about it. These are another four trades. Now four, five, eight, nine. I have nine trades open at the same time. Now think about it. All of a sudden, if the market would have just dumped, bro, I would have lost some money on Microsoft, QQQs, AMD, SPX. I've lost money. Now the risk is definitely there, but you, bro, you gotta be in the lottery to win the lottery. You see what I'm saying? You gotta risk it for the biscuit. And I was just in the zone. I was just like a whore. I was watching the market so closely. And that's exactly what I always tell people. Don't, bro, protect your confidence on days when shit's not working. Because the day, the reason why most of you are not ever able to experience this type of sink in the market because you never let your brain get into the sink with the market you do stuff that you even you know that you shouldn't be doing i don't do that in my brain i know what sink feels like and i was just in a sink and you can't do this unless you are in the sink with the market and bro i'm not even i'm not even talking crap all my students were actually watching me live do this and that's the beauty of this whole thing because um Look at this. I'm not. <laughs> you might be like, "Yeah, I'm. I'm talking crap." Nah. Look at this. Uh, just look at this. All right. These are the gains of my students. 
this consistency, right? These are my gains of the students. 8,700, 620, 420, 267, 200, 26, 190, 1,500. That's my gains, yes. Um, like this is what's 530, 650, 816, 275, 400, 450, biggest day ever, 170, 500, 3500, 120%. This is all actually done in the real time. All these people were able to see my stuff in the real time. Yo, that's 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 um that's the beauty of this. You see what I'm saying? Look at this. That's a beauty of what we do. Because I do this where they can see my screen in the real time. Now I'm not trying to just be like, hey guys, uh, come buy my program and cheer. No, uh, I'm just trying to give you the source and show you that this was all done live. And uh, not that I have to prove anything to you, but just like I was in the sync with the market. And when I'm in the sync with the market, man, I just print money. And that's just the beauty of it. Now I'll go back to the AMD trade. Similar stuff, same shit that I did. I just saw the market push up like this. It's above pre-market high that I was able to see. Yesterday's high that I was able to see. It was pushing up and this was a critical level. And the price went up. And there's different type of um, breakouts now. One breakout is it just breaks out like this. You can't do anything about it. Second breakout is where we literally go and make a flag. And the third different type of breakout is this. This is called shakeout breakout. And most of the time you'll see a breakout like this where be, literally uh, it will shake some people out then stick around there for a, for a minute and then go. And in this concept, what you can do is you can just set up and you can wait. All this is a tug of war happening between buyers and sellers. And you want to just bet on the person who wins, right? If it goes up, I'm going to buy it. That's what I exactly did. I bought and uh, this was again, I think it was like 40% trade. Um, yeah, 40% trade. 40% uh, trade. It was absolutely beautiful. And then comes my next, which was um, SPY, SPX or whatever you want to call it. And uh, But the concept that I want to really, really again go back to was um, this another concept called, I don't know how much sauce that I've dropped. This is called negative risk management and this keeps me calm on days like this okay so think about it let's say um, you went long here on um, AMD okay you picked up these contracts let's say a dollar we'll just keep it easy okay a dollar that means a um, hundred bucks a contract that's that's what you're paying all right price started moving up it came, hit your first profit target. Your second, your second level is sitting right here. Level two, level one. It hits your first profit target, and you have ten contracts. That means you have thousand dollars in position size. Okay, it hits this, and now the contracts are sitting at dollar fifty. So you're like, okay, it went up there. You, what you're gonna do is whatever position size you have, you're gonna take half off. As soon as it hits your first profit target, you're gonna take half off. Now fifty bucks a contract, you take half off five that's 250 bucks 250 bucks is in your pocket now that money is in your pocket and you still have five contracts left there's two ways how this can go and i'll break down the both concepts one it reverses if it reverses and the option premium went back to a dollar you're going to jump out you still get to keep this 250 the profits that you took this is the one and this is called negative risk management. That means if the trade goes against you, your stop loss is sitting at break even of the option contract. Sweet. And the second way this can go is literally it start playing around a little bit here and then it goes to the next target. The moment it goes to the next target now, what you need to do, the moment it hits your next profit target, you're going to take another half off. So now you might be like, bro, but I had five contracts that I still had. How can I do? I can't do two and a half. Yeah, you do three, like go a little bit higher. Okay, you take three off. Now these contracts from $1.50, these contracts might be sitting at say $1.90. So now 90 bucks a contract, you took three contracts off, that's 270 bucks. You still have two contracts running. Stop loss is still break even just in case if it reverses here, comes down, hits your stop loss, you jump out okay um and but what if it keeps going up what if it's this is the next level and it goes hits the next level now you have two contracts left you take one off and that might be at this time the contracts might be sitting at 310 so now you're like okay that's um you entered at a dollar 210 bucks 
times one, that's 210, and you still have one contract left. If it reverse, your stop loss is still sitting at dollar, okay? But if it keeps going higher, hits your next profit target or next level or next one hour chart level that you have, you jump out, there might be 350, let's say 350. And now you're like, okay, that's 250 bucks times one. So think about it. Here, you let your runners run at basically zero risk because, bro, you had a stop loss at zero, like break even anyway. So this concept is called negative risk management. You let your runners run to a point where the market screams at you, please get out now. Everything looks good because last profit target, you got to take the last contract off. Now you have left zero. You see what I'm saying? Now calculate these gains. Think about it. 250, 250. What is that? 500, 500 plus 250, 750, 770, 770 plus 210. You do the math. What is that? Eight, um, 870, 970, 980. That means on a $1,000 position size, you made 980 bucks. But what a lot of people do is as soon as your first profit target hit, they tell themselves nobody goes broke taking profits, but nobody gets rich taking fucking small profits, yo. You gotta let your motherfucking profits run. That's how you make money. You see what I'm saying? And they, those people take profits here. They're like, yeah, nobody goes broke taking profits. I'm happy with my $500 returns. Right, uh, you live in four eighty bucks on the table, man. Why, why, why would you do that? Why? You gonna why? Why? This is the money, yo. This is the money that and and this is your first profit target's gonna keep you in the business. Your runners is gonna actually build wealth. Think about it. Whatever you wanna do, you decide now. But this is the concept called negative risk management, and that's exactly what I do with my trades as well. Like for example, me entering here, I take my first profit target. If it hits the break even, I'll jump out. If it, hit, it doesn't hit the break even, I stay in. And that's what I do. I keep taking profits as we go up, and that's how you make money, and that's how you keep getting rich and rich and rich and rich. All right. Now similar stuff that I was doing on spy key key cues. Now you gotta understand that. When I'm trading SPY, uh, um, when I'm trading SPX, I'm watching SPY's chart. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. There's nothing different about it. These both charts look exactly the same. They move the same. Everything happens. But it's just like, um, bro, think about it. One contract of, not 10 contracts of SPY is one contract of SPX when you're trading options that's basically it one dollar move here is like roughly ten dollar move on spx but when i'm trading spy um spx man i'm trading through spy's chart because i have watched spy chart so much over the years that i just know how spy moves a little bit and it just like mentally calms me keeps me calm keeps me sane you see what i'm saying that's exactly what it is same thing spy came like spy was like kind of you know uh, made a decent move came back retested this eight exponential moving average held uh, broke above this level me going long me going long again here i actually did a few entries on this um very small position size early in the morning i didn't call this play out in the chat i didn't call this play out the reason why i didn't call this play out in the chat was it was very super risky trade but i was up already on microsoft i entered a little bit i'm like yeah i feel good i didn't call it out in my chat I'm just keeping it real all right um then price started moving and then i called out the play um all right, and uh, we took the play, sweet, made a decent move up, and uh, I, at this stage, yo, I'm not, not even joking, I had, I think I had uh, 58.45 calls, 58.50 calls, um, around, roughly around, um, roughly around somewhere here, I'll, I'll show you why I actually entered, um, I'll show you on SPX chart, maybe you'll understand a little bit better, all right, so now, what's the, the whole point behind this actual trade? Um, the, the last one, and I think you can learn something from this. That's why I want to really break this down, not to confuse you. So the whole point of this trade was I was watching. I was watching like this, okay? I had um, SPX chart here. I had Spice chart here. I was watching both of these charts very closely, and I was watching pretty much everything that I was in. I was in Microsoft. I was in um, AMD. I was in uh, QQQs. I'm in uh, SPX. I was watching everything at, at this time. I was, like, I was like a beast watching everything. You see what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> And on this chart, man, what I saw was 58.50 is a huge critical level, all right? Um, if earlier in the day, 58.50 just because it's a whole number. I'm not trying to confuse you here. I'm just actually, it might be confusing. That's why please stop this video, take notes. Um, it was getting rejected off this 
once, twice. Okay, it's a huge whole number. Okay, SPX like every fifty dollar move. All right, fifty eight fifty, fifty nine hundred, then fifty nine fifty. It likes every fifty dollar move. And what I was watching was let's see if the candle is able to close close above it. The candle closed above it. Now I was already up. I'm like, okay, the candle closed above it. Let me just add a little bit more. Stop loss for this most recent ad is if the candle came below fifty eight fifty. That was it. We tried in the morning to close above. We couldn't once twice we couldn't but this time we did and that was the only reason why i actually jumped into this particular trade that i did um and it was uh, it turned out to be beautiful beautiful move why because look at this it made a big move up huge move up 10 o'clock hit i jumped to a five minute chart everything looked bloody gorgeous and i'm just like sweet everything looks nice and similar stuff was happening on spy look at this spy uh, everything everything's looking absolutely fantastic i even added on a bit i was looking at five minute chart two minute chart i showed you i added here as well bro i uh, man i was just in the zone you get my point now the most important concept that i want to really break down if you take away just this from this video i added again bro i had like the, the, no not here actually i'll show you when i added um i added yeah, I added the next candle because we were breaking out of the flag that we were forming. I was like, man, why wouldn't I do that? This looks absolutely beautiful. I added again. I, I was just in the zone. But then I realized something crazy um, on the next candle. I saw this and I, I saw something really crazy. And I want I want you to really pay attention to this. This concept, let me go back. And it, bro, this is so important. It's called trend structure. Okay what is a structure this is a structure what happens in this structure this is the lows this is higher lows you see what i'm saying then this is higher lows again this is how trend works it just keeps this the highs it keeps making new highs higher highs higher highs it keeps making higher highs but every time it makes new highs there's usually a little bit like at least more volume than the pullback like if the volume is on the pullbacks like this then there's a little bit more volume. Doesn't have to be more volume than the previous one, but just have to be more volume than the red candles that we saw on a pullback. That's what makes a trend keep going higher because you want to see the buyers are getting interested. You see what I'm saying? But when does a trend actually fail? The trend fails when we go up and the volume on the red candle starts increasing. The green candle starts dropping. When it's going up, it makes a new high of the day and the volume drops. When the volume drops, you want to really, really pay attention to this because that is called a tr trap. That's when smart money is trapping people so they can take their money away from them. And I saw that happening and I was like, okay, and it started coming down. That When I saw that volume drop, I was like, oh my God. Then I waited for the red candle to confirm if one red candle happens. Let's see if the volume is more on that red candle. The volume was more like all right i'm out then i slowly started getting now when i am in such so big position sizes man i can't just be like press one button and get out i started getting out took me about five minutes to get out uh, my whole all the trades look at this we made a new high look at this we made a new high the red candle had decent more volume like a lot a lot of volume green candles make a new all, all like the whole um you know high of the day made new high of the day and the volume is not good and then the red candle volume is not i'm like oh this is a trap and volume started picking up and that's when i was like okay i'm out i'm done i'm done 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 this is it this is it volume buyers for small volume and this is a trap and when this structure breaks when this structure breaks now it's game over all the people who got trapped here, they're going to sit there hoping for the market to come back. But you know who gets rich? Smart money. So they have made this trap after such a trendy market. They make this trap usually. So what's the structure break here? The structure will break the moment it gets below this. And the moment it gets below this, now it's game on the downside. Look at that structure broke and then a structure started forming towards the downside and matter of fact at 11 o'clock what did i say when 11 o'clock hits what did i say i jump to 10 minute chart and 11 o'clock i jump to 10 minute chart 
Look at that. We broke below the structure, pulled back a little bit, gave a nice little nice candle that I like to see. You see this nice candle? And then it broke below the view up and it made a huge move down. Matter of fact, I actually caught this move right here from this point to, I think I caught this move to, yeah, actually this was not a big move that I caught. Um, I caught this move from this point to the view up, then this level, then this candle a little bit. I caught this move down again, but I never posted up to the profits on social media, but it was, it paid, it, oh my God, oh my God, it paid well. It paid well on SPX, oh la la, yo, it paid <laughs> it paid stacks um i don't know why it paid so much maybe we just broke below the 5850 the moment it broke below 5850 the price is just skyrocketed down and i'm like oh la la done 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 i'm now i'm out and these were my few trades um basically it was structure break happening there was so much stuff happening on this um now whatever notes you took from this video man i am glad that it helped all right please 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 Please, yo, I have one ask. If you spent one last one hour of your time with me, man, I'm so fucking proud of you because you'd rather, bro, you'd rather watch these videos. They're going to help you and your family. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful because you're hungry, because you're hungry for success. And that actually freaking makes so much sense. Um, I appreciate you. And um, I hope this one hour was the best time that you ever spent. Also, also, make sure you like this video. It just gives, it just tells me that you actually watched all the way till the end. Like the video. Let me know in the comments that you actually watched all the way till the end. I just say, let's say, let me know. Just say, bro, I finished. I uh, bro, I watched this video all the way till the end. And here's um, um, here's a just send me a little beer emoji, okay. Um, <laughs> and also, yo, I just have to let you know that um, there will be some videos here. Uh, more trade breakdowns or something somewhere around here and there will be a link probably in this corner somewhere um if you want to join my university and actually learn from me personally and um, click this link fill out the form 30 seconds and i'll see you later all right hope this was helpful um base subscribe to the channel goodbye